We are in a study of Hebrews. It is an important study for us because it demonstrates to us that, that our Savior Jesus Christ is uh, working on our behalf to save us from this untoward generation. But the uh, letter was written pr primarily to the uh, Hebrews, uh, Christians in Jerusalem and surrounding area, because they were thinking about abandoning, abandoning the gospel and going back into Judaism. So it was written to fortify their faith, and by fortifying their faith, it also fortifies our faith. So we'll start in it. I'll mention some of the things I mentioned last time, but we'll start. Let's have a short word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the amazing grace that was shed upon us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're thankful for this particular letter that, that shows His care and love for us and that, he, uh, that it was necessary for Him to come as a man, to live as a man, and die perfectly that through that perfection we might have the hope of eternal life. These things we ask in His name. Amen. I think we mentioned uh, last time that uh, <clears throat> uh, the way that the Hebrew Christian Jews, uh, Jews in particular, just viewed uh, God and we uh, stated that uh, no one has seen the face of God, but that Moses, and he spoke to him face to face, and I said, you know, can a, <laughs> two blind friends have a face to face meeting? So uh, Moses could meet with him uh, face to face, but not yet see him. That, that is very possible. <clears throat> So, in view of that, the, because of the uh, high regard that the Jews held for God, uh, in, his, in the Old Testament, it's Elohim, which is a, uh, a plural noun, but most of the times where it's used, the verb is singular except in the place where it said, let us make man in our own image. The uh, make in our own image, make is a plural uh, verb. So at least there is the uh, possibility, and I think a very good one, that when he uses the, the word Elohim, he's talking about just deity. Uh, it was not as clearly defined in the Old Testament, the three persons of the uh, Godhead as is made very clear in the New. You know, we find in uh, 1 John, it talks about the Word. In the beginning was the Word. Well, that's Jesus. We can call Him Jesus because we know we have the history there. We know that He was Jesus. So even though He's called the Word in the beginning, we know it was Jesus in the beginning even though he wouldn't call that in the Old Testament. But anyway, the, uh, uh, again, because of the, uh, if you want to call it the awesome nature of God, the, uh, uh, the Jews would not call him by his name. They use a, uh, what we translate into uh, English just because we try to pronounce it. There's no vowels in that uh, word, I guess. We call it Yahweh or Jehovah. You know, we'll, we'll anglicize it and call it Jehovah. But that's how the uh, Jews viewed him. And give you another example of that. Turn over to 
Well, we start in John 14, 6. And uh, you, you know that what that says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes unto the Father but by me. I am the way to the Father. But he goes on to read, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on you know him and have seen him. <clears throat> Well, poor old Philip, he, he always gets saddled with this, I guess, the doubting. Uh, he said, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Because they never seen the Father, you can't see the Father. <clears throat> and Jesus said, uh, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe for the sakes of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to, go to my Father. And he goes on to say, uh, if you love me, keep my commandments. So, does God the Father look like Jesus? Well, Jesus came as a man. But God is not physical. God the Father is not physical. He's spirit. So God, uh, who came down as a man in the form of Jesus, God the Father does not have that physical appearance because God is not physical. He's spiritual. So what can Jesus mean when he says, if, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? You want to know what uh, the Father thinks about sin? Well, listen to Jesus. If you know what the Father thinks about obedience, well, think about, uh, I meant to look to Jesus. If you want to know what uh, holiness is, well, look at Jesus. He is the absolute embodiment of God the Father, except he is, he is every bit as man as you and I are, uh, or mankind. Maybe say mankind. <laughs> I don't want to get in this deal where, <laughs> you know, women think they're men. <laughs> so mankind, you're, he was just as much mankind as we are, yet he is the very essence of God the Father. So... So that's what uh, uh, the very first word in um, Hebrews says, God. And it takes no more introduction than that to get uh, their, their attention. And it reads there uh, the first four verses of Hebrews and we'll um, maybe take them individually but it says there God who in various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets <clears throat> well let's kind of look at that uh, God at various times in various ways well, that just means in times past, up to this time, God has spoken in a number of different ways. He's spoken by uh, prophets, priests. Uh, in this time right now, He's speaking by His Son, uh, Jesus Christ, and His apostles. And there's something we can say about that in just a moment. Let me just say, in in, in various ways, spoke... In times past, in time past, 
to the fathers by the prophets. So the way that he uh, spoke the message was sometimes he used prophets, sometimes he used dreams, sometimes he used visions, sometimes he spoke uh, directly when, for example, when he gave uh, Moses Ten Commandments. Uh, so there's various ways that he spoke to the people. But he didn't do it all at once. In Isaiah, the 28th chapter, verses 9 through 10, if you want to look at that, uh, it says there, Whom will he teach knowledge? And whom will he make to understand the message? Those just weaned from the milk, and we'll see that later in Hebrews, those uh, weaned from milk, those just drawn from the breast, for, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here little, there little. So it was not all given at once. There was a gradual uh, revelation of the will of heaven, and it took, you know, uh, thousands of years until it got down to the time that uh, Jesus appeared on the earth. And you look at that, it says, uh, spoken times past by the prophets, uh, to the fathers, by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son. He's spoken to us by his son. Well, uh, he says, in Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 15. Uh, Therefore, when you see the uh, abomination of uh, desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, again the prophet speaking, standing in the uh, holy place, let him uh, understand that uh, he's appointed heirs through whom he made also the world. So, God has now spoken to us and to the Hebrew Christians by His Son. And that's the only way that He speaks to the people now. He speaks to the people in no other way except through His Son and then, of course, uh, through His ambassadors, the uh, the apostles, those that uh, were divinely guided by the Holy Spirit to record things, and we have that, and that's the only way that he speaks to us today. So those uh, who may uh, uh, proclaim a latter-day revelation, it's just a lie. The revelation, at the time these things were written, that's it. And the Hebrew Christians should look not back, but to the present, to Jesus Christ himself. If they abandon Jesus, there's nothing else. Going back to, into the old law means you're going to be subject to the old law, to the uh, uh, demands of the law, the, the punishment that it demands, and you're not going to have available the grace that is through Jesus Christ. This is it. So, uh, let's see here. Let's talk a moment about the uh, nature of God. And keep in mind, the nature of God is exactly the same nature that Jesus had. Because they're, they're both God. And that's sometimes difficult for us to understand is how you can have God that's one, but yet three. And they're exactly of the same nature. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are of exactly the same na uh, nature. Different uh, things that they are tasked with doing, and I think I 
told Connie that, or she asked me about it, that I don't know how they decided that back, you know, before time began. And we can't say, I can't really say that they decided because that means there was a point in time when it wasn't decided. But that's not the case. It's always been this way. You, you give me a, a very good uh, definition of eternity. <laughs> I, I don't understand it. But it was always this way from, I can't even say the beginning of eternity because eternity had no beginning. So they were always this way. And of course, uh, mankind and the physical universe had a had a beginning. And so, you know, the very nature of God was that they would provide a way for uh, mankind to achieve once again the uh, holiness that happened before the uh, the fall. But anyway. Uh, God's a, a single entity a deity just think of a deity yet he is um, uh, I guess you can call it persons personality I wouldn't say personalities because personalities indicate that you look at things differently but that's not the case different persons yes sir Triune being, the triangle is a good, uh, well, it's somewhat of a good example. Yeah. The one God. Think, think of a triangle. Yeah, there's three sides to, and it's, it's an imperfect example, but. Uh, we have to somehow appeal to our finite mind. It's no longer a triangle, so you got to have all three. And if you think of the triangle as deity, you got to have all three. That's the reason Hebrew Elohim is a plural one. Yeah. That's the reason they use beginning God. Well, that's the reason they use the singular verb because it's it's. It's a multiple thing that's doing one thing. It's, does that make sense? <laughs> the problem with us is we think of three individual human beings, three persons, and we try to make the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit three individual. Well, we're, Nine, it will work. we're finite trying to understand the infinite, but I think uh, uh, probably we just need to, we can define those things, maybe not really ever understanding them, but we can define them and we know what the uh, divinity, the divine being, uh, wants us to do, and, and we can do that and be acceptable to Him. So maybe, <clears throat> maybe that's the answer. Just, uh, and just know that we have our limitations as finite beings, and and uh, accept what uh, deity wants us to do, and do it, be obedient to His will. It's kind of one of those things that uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29, you know, there's, there's things that have been disclosed to us that we can know. We can know. But there's some things that have, have not been disclosed to us we don't know. God never sets out in a uh, uh, propositional form to, to prove himself. And there are proofs that... Uh, demonstrate that there was a creator and if there is a creator uh, one must look for that creator but you're not going to find you can look at a leaf and, and determine that uh, there is a, a pattern uh, to that leaf and if there is somebody had to create that pattern but you can look at that leaf all day long you, you'll never uh, come to the plan of salvation you're not going to do it it's only by uh, uh, revelation that you're going to know that
So anyway, the uh, uh, central subject of the of Hebrews it it's uh, concerned Jesus because that was the uh, the very thing that these Hebrew Christians were going to give up. And there were things that they had to be made aware of about Jesus, about his uh, nature and so forth, that uh, uh, they had not quite grasped. They were trying to fit him in the mold of the uh, Old Testament uh, characters or Old Testament uh, law, and it couldn't be done. But I think they did know if they accepted Jesus and all that he taught, then the mosaical system was done for. He was going to be gone. In fact, very shortly after this uh, uh, letter was written, it was <clears throat> if the uh, scholars are right, saying that it was written mid 60s, say the mid 60s. In a very short time, <clears throat> that they were not going to have that uh, uh, mosaical system to fall back on because it was going to be gone. <clears throat> Let's see. Again, I said that uh, uh, the, uh, the Christ was, uh, or the Son, was certainly prophesied in the Old Testament many times. Never used the word Jesus. Uh, and exactly what the nature of that kingdom was, the Jews had the idea that it was going to be an earthly kingdom and that this uh, Christ or uh, Messiah was going to live forever on an earthly kingdom, much in the fashion of David. And he was going to rule the uh, world from Jerusalem and all the Gentiles were going to be subject to the Jews. Well, that, that was a misconception on the part of the, the uh, Jews and, and they were as unwarranted for them to come to that idea. So, but they did understand these uh, Hebrew Christians did understand that you know when they accepted uh, Jesus as their Savior, as the Christ, as the Messiah, that He was the one that to whom that uh, would uh, remove the sins of the world. That that spelt the end of the mosaical system. They understood that. But it was still there at the time of the writing. The temple was still there. The priest was still there. The sacrifices were still there. The thing that uh, had not been there before was their persecution by the, the uh, Jews. And they said, uh, I'm sure they uh, rationalized that, well, look, you know, I've accepted... Uh, Christ, the Savior, it is replacing the uh, mosaical system. But the system's still here. It doesn't seem to be going away. It's just as uh, robust as it ever was. But maybe it's not going away. Maybe this new religion of Christianity, maybe, that's, maybe there's nothing to it at all. So maybe we just go back to the uh, the old system and uh, then be done with it. But as it said in the first uh, chant, the first verse here, he's speaking. God is speaking through His Son now, and that is the only way that He's speaking. And there'll be a time when the mosaical system is going to be done away with.
in the Acts 10.38, let's see here, Acts 10.38, It says there that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. And he, and he referred to again to uh, uh, God's proclamation after uh, Jesus was baptized in Matthew the third chapter verses 16 and 17 when he had been baptized that's Jesus when he had been baptized Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased so here is the son of God he's been uh, appointed by God for the salvation of people it was necessary for him to come as a man in order that he might uh, show man that uh, perfection was in obedience to uh, the uh, father which he did he did obey and since he was tempted in all uh, respects as we are, yet without sin, then that qualified him to be that supreme sacrifice on behalf of of everyone who rendered obedience to him. And so he was the uh, the one to whom uh, these Jews should be looking and being obedient to and not abandoning. But yet they were. In Isaiah the ninth chapter, <clears throat> as I said, there is, there are prophecies as to um, um, that a, that a son is going to be born. So it says, "For un, unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given." And the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And when uh, Jesus came to uh, the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the people or the disciples there, saying, "Who do people say that I am?" the Son of Man, Ham. They said, uh, some say John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. <clears throat> but he said to them, who do you say that I am? And of course, Simon Peter, uh, Peter answered and said, uh, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, uh, answered him and said, uh, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for... Um, Flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And he goes on to say that upon you, Peter, this, this confession that you made, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So this is what the uh, Jews were trying to uh, abandon. And he was called the Messiah, the, the anointed one. I think in the uh, Old Testament, Emmanuel, God with us. We found the Messiah, which is uh, uh, Andrew, the brother of Simon, and declared that to be the case. In verse 3, he says, Who being the uh, brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged their sins sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high and I think the uh, King James and the ASV I think use the word effulgence 
which has to do with uh, something very bright. You know, you you look at the uh, sun. Well, actually, you don't look at the sun. In fact, you don't see the sun. In fact, I don't see you. What I see is the light that's been reflected off you and it's been recorded in, uh, or re captured by my eyes and then recorded in my brain. So that's kind of the idea. Jesus is the effulgence or the brightness of the glory of God. You've seen the Father, seen Him, you've seen the Father. And the express image of this person, now keep in mind that this uh, image it's not the same thing as a physical image. It's the, uh, it's the image of his uh, spirit. Everything that is God, so is Jesus. And he upholds all things by the word of his power. And, of course, we uh, uh, can refer to John 1 where it says, In, in, in the beginning was the word, and the word uh, was with God, and the word was God, and all things that made made uh, through him but in the beginning they're all three there together and they're perfectly joined in their essence and this uh, uh, all things made through him we should not have the idea that uh, that Jesus went down to Home Depot and got uh, lumber and stuff like that and then made the world. He, did. he made it out of nothing next to Nihilo. There was nothing, and he made it. And that's uh, the word of his power, and it sustains it. If it was not for the word of God, uh, the things as we know it would not exist. And when he purged our sins, now that doesn't mean that, say for someone who has sinned but refuses to repent of those sins, that Jesus has purged those sins. But he is the reason that sins can be purged, can be uh, done away with. Because as God coming down in the form of man and living as a man perfectly, it qualified him to to uh, purge our sins. And once he's done that, once he ascended back into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. The majesty, of course, would be uh, God the Father. And any time he sat down on the right hand of anyone, uh, that signifies uh, equal power. You, you occupy... Uh, elevated and and uh, supreme position with respect to the one by whom you are sitting that indicates right hand indicates power so in terms of um, elevating, uh, exalting Christ in Philippians, the second chapter, verses 9 through 11. It says there that God has highly, uh, has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And we're talking about the right hand of God, the power of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth, which covers about every place. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. And also in John, uh, uh, 1 John 1, verse 7, if we will walk in the light and see in the light, we have fellowship with one another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His Son cleanses us from all sins. So again, keep in mind, this is what the uh, Hebrew Christians were trying to uh, abandon. 
they were trying to ban that. <clears throat> Let's see here. Well, we'll start here uh, next time.